Good morning, everyone. Uh, I'm Steve Parsons, CEO of Gold Source Mines. Certainly delighted to be here today in New York. Uh, for those of you that know us, you would know that we are expressly focused on projects with both resource scale, multi-million ounces, but then also project scalability. Do you have the ability to scale the project, scale the CapEx? Do you have an executable project to start? Um, scalability has been our focus from day one. Um, Frankly, it's not just because we're seeing 40-year high inflations that we're now talking about scalability. This has been fundamental to the projects we select in our process, and, and it's been the case uh, since day one and for the team we've got. I will be making forward-looking statements, as you'd expect. So in terms of the project, we own 100% interest in the Eagle Mountain project in Guyana. Uh, the project hosts 1.8 million ounces, so it has that resource scale. 1.8 million ounces in the indicated and inferred categories with runway for resource growth along two key structural trends. We've got a north-south and a northeast trend. Now, importantly, the project has features that cater to scalability and overall execution. Now, critically here, you can see in the photograph, Eagle Mountain's very shallow. Okay, the gold starts at surface. It's laterally extensive. We've got 1.2 million ounces in the indicated category. And that indicated resource has an average depth of 35 meters. Okay, so it's essentially, it's a surface mining operation with a very low strip. Just below it sits, sits the inferred and also on the edges as well. Secondly, of the, of the ounces, 500,000 ounces are hosted in the weathered saprolite. So it's, it's as you see here in the picture, it's, it's, it's on surface, it's free digging, no drilling, no blasting. You dig with an excavator, you direct it to a low capital intensity mill. So clearly significant CapEx and, and OpEx benefits there, which we'll get into with our PFS. Lastly, deposits flat line. So what it means is, is you've got the flexibility to, to drop the excavator in on the high grade areas to start with. So you can front end load the grade and therefore front end load the cash flow. So key characteristics here that uh, enable us to envision a phased development strategy with Eagle Mountain, whereby we start in the saprolite generate free cash flow there, and then move into the underlying more conventional fresh rock project, which is also very shallow. It just sits, sits below the saprolite. We are in Guyana, um, 230 kilometers southwest of Georgetown, uh, which is the capital. We are road accessible, which is not every project in, in Guyana has that. Uh, that helps us keep the expiration costs in check. We are also seven kilometers south of an area called Madia. Madia is the capital of Region 8. 3,500 people, it's a central mining location, schools, hospitals, mechanic shops. Um, and as I said, good access to the project, whether by road or by commercial flights, we can fly in uh, four times a week with commercial flights. So good access there. Guyana, importantly, Guyana is a mining country. There is a pedigree for mining in this country through, through the mining code, through um, the fluency of, of the agencies to mining and also the skills of the workers. Now, what I would say is that the, the pedigree of mining is not underground mining. The, the pedigree is very much open pit. And, and fortunately for us, we have a, a, sh a very shallow open pit. Um, what's happening in Guyana that you should to pay attention to? Uh, the company, the country rather, just became a very significant oil and gas producer at the end of 2019. They've currently got about $800 million uh, of cash sitting in a sovereign wealth fund. That's now being redeployed and importantly into infrastructure. The biggest knock on Guyana was not the geology, I mean, it's always been perspective for gold. The knock was infrastructure, particularly for bigger companies that want to come in and, and, and build out large projects. Well, there's a road upgrade project that's been financed going ahead. You can see the, the government there doing the first dig uh, a, couple, a couple weeks ago. And they're a little bit behind schedule. That should be done in, in 2025, 121 kilometers, 192 million. That runs right by our project. Uh, other infrastructure projects, power, power projects, there's a gas destroyer project, there's, there's quite a lot happening. And, and obviously for us, a lot of it's happening in the direction of, of Eagle Mountain, which benefits, which will benefit us. And certainly as this infrastructure is in place, it will benefit the miners in the country. So I, I, frankly, I cannot think of any other mining jurisdiction where the infrastructure build out is as significant with pace as I see in Guyana right now. As far as, as far as our project, Eagle Mountain, we're in the green box, 5,000 hectares, about 10 kilometers by five kilometers, very much in a mining area. The red dots represent the gold and alluvials and golden saprolites. So pretty significant activity all around us, almost in every direction. Looking at the right-hand figure, you can see we've got two corridors of mineralization, a north-south and the northeast. The northeast 
is the Eagle Mountain deposit that hosts the 1.7, about 1.65 million ounces. And the North South hosts a series of satellite deposits from Salbora to Can Powys. And we've got some other new discoveries there as well. The red dots on the figure on the right represent gold over one gram per ton. The orange dots are, are gold over 0.5, just to give you a feel for, for that. Again, just another sort of satellite image of, of what's happening in and around us with some alluvial operations, very significant size alluvial operations, but a lot of activity. In our, and those red circles represent um, the gold uh, deposit at Eagle Mountain in Salbora. Just to give you a feel for, for what's happened in the last several years, we've had some significant discoveries. More recently, in the last two years, we've had two resource updates. We had a resource update in April of February of last year, then another one in, in April of this year, and the one of April of this year, we had a 40% increase in indicated resource, with the indicated resource currently sitting at 1.2 million ounces. And that was based on about uh, an additional 17,000 meters of infill drilling we did in 2021. Um, at the end of 2021, we added about 9,000 meters of exploration drilling. We had some significant discoveries, a high-grade area at Toucan, which I'll talk about, and a new discovery called SOCA which we announced in, in uh, March. However, recent discovery did not make it into the resource update. Looking ahead, bigger picture, PFS for us, uh, we're looking to get a PFS completed in the, by first half of next year, and that will show the benefits of so the shallow nature of the mineralization, the free digging on the saprolite, and how that gets contextualized with, um, with CapEx and OpEx. So touched on this already, I would just say that the resource update MRE we've got here is defined by 772 core holes, about 70, 75,000 meters of drilling with a very shallow average depth of 98 meters. So what we've got here are, as I said, the, the northeast and the north-south trends. The, the northeast trend, you can see the big pink blob, that's about 1.65 million ounces, all very shallow. And then we've got a, about a 4.5 kilometer north-south structure with a series of deposits along it. They're more vertical, sub-vertical, whereas the, the bigger pink blob is, is sub-horizontal zones. And it's, it's essentially, it's a, thr a thrust fault with shears hosted in granite diorite. And they're expressed as, as, as very shallow mineralization in, in stacked horizons, which you can see in the figure here. The figure on the, on the left is, is the Eagle Mountain deposit. That's the, that's the one point. Six five million ounces. You can see it's very shallow. Uh, this is contained in a pit constrained resource. The figure on the right just takes a cross section of it. Some of the high grade results we came back with in the stacked sub horizontal zones that start at surface. One of which was um, hole 007 that hit 42 meters of 20 grams per ton starting at surface. A lot of that in saprolite. And the average, the average, the true, the true width of that was about 34 meters. So some very high grades within. Uh, generally a, uh, about a 1.05 gram per ton deposit. Salbora is the second discovery. It's more vertical, sub-vertical. I'm just going just gonna to move through this very quickly in the interest of time. That's it's smaller, about 140,000 ounces, but about 60% higher grade. So what we're doing for 2022, there's, there's three key objectives. Really, the second and the third are similar. On the exploration side, we are working through an 11,000 meter phase one drilling program where we're following up on Toucan Soka and some other targets at the Eagle Mountain deposit, notably an area called Saddle. We are reinitiating generative exploration, something we haven't done in a few years where we're looking really for the first time at the eastern side of the property. We've only been focused on the western side where there's been road access and frankly, where we've been having a lot of success. So we will be coming back to you with some of the results on the east side, nothing to report as of yet. Um, but we're working through it here in 2022. Engineering, the stuff we need to do to get through and deliver that pre-feasibility study the middle, the middle of next year. So for us, we don't have any outcrops um, at Eagle Mountain. It's, it's sort of very difficult geological terrain, but what worked very well for us and has been instructive is, is geophysics. And that helped us with the discovery of Salbora whenever we have sort of a coincident chargeability anomaly with the resistivity that tends to be a good place for us, for us to look. So that's how we discovered Salbora. More recently, we've, we've been drilling Toucan on that basis and some targets to the south. Toucan, for example, late 2021, we hit 41 meters of 4.3 grams per ton from surface. So, so this is helping us out, identifying some of these, these higher grade satellite deposits, typically in the north-south, where there is a higher sulfide content than, than what's in Eagle Mountain. 
Soka as well, which I don't have a figure for here. That was the new discovery uh, we announced in March and, and some very high grades there as well, which we'll be following up on. On the green fields, I'm just going to work through this. Essentially what we can do in Guyana, while we don't have outcrop, it's easy to trench. It's easy to do auger results. Obviously with the, with the saprolite on surface, it's very soft. Do that work. So we'll be following up on that generative program and, and moreover looking for regional opportunities given that sort of satellite, satellite image I showed you, there's, there's, there's uh, alluvial operations all around us. So we, we would be looking over time to consolidate our position in the area. Metallurgy, obviously this, this also caters to scalability. We're, we're seeing about 95, 96% recoveries in the saprolite. We're doing some work on the fresh rock now. The nice thing about saprolite, of course, is it's, it's low power intensity. It's got extremely low work index, small mills, small equipment, all the things that you'd like to have in an inflationary period where not a lot of other projects actually have this, right? So, so to start in a satellite is, is a real benefit for us. Um, on the cost side, we're doing more work now. We've got another very significant metallurgical program underway with 26 samples to come back with some design criteria that we will reflect in our PFS um, first half of next year. Working through it, uh, timelines, Guyana is just one of these jurisdictions where you could permit very quick couple that with our phase development plan and to be able to start in the saprolite, this is a project that in theory, and, and this is what we're working towards, is you can move through development very quickly. So the plan now is the PFS middle of next year, move through permitting, and, and the last two projects that have been permitting Guyana have been under 15 months, right? So that's, that's a tremendous opportunity for us, coupled with, with the phased approach we're embarking on. As far as the team goes, uh, proven team in terms of discoveries, but in terms of phase development approaches, uh, we don't have a lot of time here to go through the team, but Eric Fear is executive chairman of our company. He's also the founder and CEO of Silvercrest. That's been a, a tremendous silver discovery in Mexico. Uh, he's also our QP, so very involved in the resource updates and what we're doing on the, PF, on the, on the PFS side. Uh, myself, I came mainly through the through. I started as a mining engineer, quite frankly, spent a decade doing that, and has spent the last 15 years working through various Canadian banks uh, on the capital markets side. So back on, the, back on the corporate side, what we see here with Eagle Mountain, what brought me to the project was the ability to scale it, the resource size, and some of the tremendous things that are happening in, in Guyana right now. Currently, uh, market cap is, is about $31 million. We're not too happy with that. We've got about 5.7 million Canadian in cash. Uh, we, we, that, that will take us through this year into early next year. And we've got very strong support from some, some very well-known investors. They like what we're doing with the phased development plan. They buy into that. They like the soft rock saprolite component to be able to accelerate the development of this project as well. And they certainly like the, the exploration potential we still have, not just on the western side of our property where we've been focused, but the eastern side as well. So I will leave it there. I'm probably